What's up guys, Shane from Figure 3D Printing, and today I've got something kind of cool. It's 3D printing filament from a company called Kodak. Welcome back guys, I said, magically Kodak makes filament. Who would have thunk that this is a, a venture that they want to go into as a photography company, of all things. So Kodak contacted me about two months ago asking me about if I wanted to review some of their filament. And this is the first box they've sent. I think they're sending the other versions once they're released. They were just released in March. I'm hoping to get some of those later, but this is their PLA Plus. And um, again, I'm just crazy to see that they're actually trying to do this. And they also have a new uh, printer coming out, or a printer coming out, called the Portrait. And it is a fully enclosed dual extruder system, very industrial looking. And I'm hopefully gonna get my hands on one of those, but that'll be a totally separate video. But for now, we're gonna check out this PLA Plus that they sent. The box, obviously, super duper branded. The Kodak logo is everywhere on every face, uh, except for the top, you've got part of the, the spool on there. But again, this is their PLA Plus. This is green 2422U. I guess that's the annotation for the green color. PLA Plus. 1.75 millimeters. It's a 750 gram spool. Uh, they say to print it at from 210 to 240, which looks like that was a change up because it was looking like 205 to 240 maybe they said, but they want it 210 minimum. Uh, a QR code, uh, UPCs, things like that. This is a sticker that they stick on, so the boxes are all the same there. And yeah, I mean, interesting. And then we open it up <laughs> and yet again, there is that Kodak brand logo right there again. Same as here. That's pretty funny. They have that all over the place. So we'll slip that out. Nothing extra in there. Put that over here. There we go. Here again, their logo on here. It's uh, the same sticker basically on the front. So it's PLA Plus. It's green. And it tells you 1.75, 750 grams. And this is, oh, it's a Ziploc bag. Love that. I've said that for so many companies that have done that. I applaud you guys for doing that. Not everyone has a proper storage solution for filament. So you guys in making this into a Ziploc bag is awesome. Oh, there's a little note here on the bottom. Keep bag sealed at all times. Good on that. So let's get this open. Okay, there's uh, two silica packs down in there. We'll put that aside and save that to use. And here is the spool. It's a nice uh, open spool. I like seeing that. You kind of can see how much filament you have left. Super tightly packed. Compact design. It's about two thirds the width of a normal uh, spool. So there's a normal spool and there's their spool. It's about, oh, I guess it's I get a little closer. I thought maybe three quarters. So it's about half an inch, three quarter inch difference between their spool and a generally normal spool, we'll call it. Again here, they have PLA Plus on there. It does not tell you the color on this one though, but it's 1.75, 750. It is 1.24 grams per centimeter cubed. And the printing temp on here says 205 plus or minus 5C. A little different than what they say on the box. So that's, yeah. Either way, I will do a temp tower, figure it out myself what they want to do it at. And again, there's the QR code. So yeah, this seems to be pretty interesting filament. Bends well. Oh, I mean, it doesn't snap. That was the corner there. And very interesting holes on here for holding it. Oh, hold up a second. These are custom spools. That is Kodak stamped into the spool. They are going Balls of walls on this, I have to say. Holy smokes. They are not joking when they go and brand something. That is pretty interesting. But I mean, it's a glued, well, I guess it's similar to an injection and glued uh, spool two sides together. But the, it doesn't have the regular holes. Like most spool, almost every spool I've ever had have two holes that you kind of loop your filament in. So you loop it in one, loop it in the other, and pull it taunt, and that's how you do it. These are like slide lock basically. So you put it in the middle and then just kind of pull on it and it kind of crimps it in there a little bit. It's not, it's not the greatest design. But it's still kind of kind of hard to like clip it in there. Yeah, you gotta give it a good push. It's okay. It's not, I don't think it's as good as they were intending. But it's start. 
again, this is the this is I think the PLA Plus is the first that they've released in their brands. Uh, they have I think five or six other different types of filament they're going to be releasing soon. So you guys will check that out. I'll put links for those ones down below. You can check all that stuff out. Um, so this filament, I'll say right before I start printing with it, uh, this rock clocks in right now at forty dollars a roll. That is proto pasta level filament. Uh, proto pasta is half a kilogram for 40 bucks for their specialty filament. PLA Plus is not really specialty, but like the OG Glitter Flake that I have was $40 or $30 for that half kilogram. 30 or 40 bucks. Proto Pasta's up there. They're, they're kind of the cream of the crop when it comes to uh, specialty filaments. So I'm hoping that this gives me some good quality prints. Uh, PLA Plus is stronger than regular PLA. Uh, it's supposed to uh, cool faster. There's a whole bunch of different things that this is supposed to do. So I want to get this loaded up on a couple different printers and see how good it actually is. All right, well, Kodak PLA Plus actually is pretty good. I'm quite surprised at how easy it was to print with. I did have to adjust a few settings. I'll show you what I had to adjust there. And I am actually amazed by its strength, even here in vase mode on several prints. I can give them a good squish without them cracking, which I could not do with a regular PLA. I also tried a few actual like structural parts. I tried this, this uh, 3D printed crescent wrench, you know, prints in one piece, prints in place. But, and this is the one also with the higher clearance. I just don't think that the, I'm quite set up properly on the CR10 for this type of print. It just, the clearance isn't high enough. So, and I printed this at 100%, I didn't scale it up at all. If I was scaled up, probably would've worked, but I can't move the uh, screw in there at all in order to actually make the jaws open and close. I've tried the hammer and with a, with a screwdriver and a bunch of different things, it will not budge. So sadly, that did not work out. But yeah, other than that, they all turned out great, but let's take a closer look. All right, so the very first thing I printed was my Maker Coin, and as you can see here, it's very stringy. Uh, I didn't even take the support off yet just because there was no reason to. I had to redo it anyways just because my settings on this were wrong. And it just, my retraction needed to be up a little bit more on the CR10 in order to make this work. Temperature was good though, and everything filled in the way it should. The only issue was retraction. So I went ahead and reprinted it and then came out with this. And this was a little bit better. I think I was still, I went up a millimeter. I should have went like maybe half a millimeter. I have some peaks on here as you can see. And some of this did not fill in properly. But other than that, all the walls are good. It actually held up very, very well on this overhang all the way around. On the over the supports it came out really well and again it is a super duper strong print i cannot even flex this part of the f and the t i normally can flex in a lot of uh colors a lot of the filaments this does not even flex it is crazy and i tried some different settings and i got all the stringing back again so i changed some more settings up i didn't reprint this one but right after i printed this and i saw i had all of those uh, issues i went ahead and printed this one now, actually, this was printed on the Cossel, the Anycubic Cossel, and then so is this one. And then once I figured out what my settings should be down for that printer, this came out really nice. A little bit of drooping under here. I think that's the cooling on the printer. But other than that, uh, it's really nice. It has kind of has this, I want to say it's inconsistent in color because it looks like it is, but it's just the way that it is, how thick the infill is down here, how thin it is up here, it's much lighter, and then it's darker down here where there's a lot uh, more infill layers, not as much light is passing through the print. Again, I tried this 3D print printed crescent wrench and the support out of this side and this side came out with a little persuasion from a pair of new nose pliers. The jaw is actually loose and this uh, insert here is actually loose, but I need to be able to pull this down or be able to move it at all, move the jaw in so I can get out this support piece and then it should work, but it's not working. It's totally fused and actually hurting my thumb trying to like rotate that. So either way, I came out really nice on the ultra base I'm using is really, really nice. Good layer adhesion. Uh, it's pretty strong. Let's see how if I can break this. Ooh. <clears throat> That's not breaking. Holy smokes. I mean, I bent it, but yeah, that is, Oh, there we go. Oh man. That's with two layers and 20% infill. Wow. That was really hard to break. So this stuff is actually really, really strong. Now, I don't know when this video is going to air, but Easter's coming up here next week. And this is a bunch of eggs that I printed. I found these on Thingiverse. So a whole bunch of different ones. I printed them all at once. So printed all five of these on the CR10 and they all came out really nice. Retraction was 
really close, but there's a tiny bit of stringing in there. I, I was actually printing this at 205 degrees, even though it says to start at like 210 or 215. It says 205 on the actual spool, so that's what I went with. And overall, they, I mean, overall they came out great. So on this one, you kind of see these little white issues here. That's just the retraction there as well. So retraction could have been a little bit better, but these eggs came out pretty cool, and I'll be sure to throw some of these in our basket this year. I've been asked to start printing temperature towers, so I'm trying to remember to do that. And I had found that this printed really well at 200, 205, just by looking at down, like I said, when I showed in my video, looking down the sides here and just looking at any of the artifacts through the face of it. But the 200, 205 range seemed to be really good. Uh, they all looked pretty good, but those, in my, to my eye, seemed like they were the best. I have a functional part here. So this is a Titan Aero uh, cooler for my Forgetech 2020 i3 aluminum. This is the extended version. The shorter version is what I'm actually using on the printer. And it printed just like this. So this is all the support wise. It came off pretty clean. So you can see that all on the layers, a little bit of up here. But other than that, it came out really nice. The insides look great. The cooling on this, this is printed on the CR10. So it's strong. Uh, I think it'll hold up a little bit higher to the temperature. So I think it'll be really nice, but I printed both just because I didn't know which one would actually fit. Uh, lastly, a couple vases. So this was printed on the, uh, uh, the Crowley CR10. It came out really nice. No real ghosting anymore. I've pretty much got that printer dialed in. Again, it feels almost like PETG. It cracked a little bit there. I mean, it will crack eventually. It's PLA. But it really feels like PETG at some times, which I'm surprised about. This small Make Anything Vance was printed on the Anycubic Costal, which is printing great all the way up until here. Then I started having random under extrusions. And yeah, the, the top pretty much failed. As you can kind of see, oh, it's a little jagged on these edges here. That means that that is where you had a little bit of extruder skipping. So you weren't getting a full filament, so you weren't getting great layer bonding. So this one is trash. Here's the uh, 3D printed rocket. So it's spiral vase mode, uh, no top layer. So it actually doesn't really have a tip on there. And it's four bottom layers. But again, I can flex this pretty good and it stays its shape. You know, it comes back. It doesn't crack on me or anything like that. But yeah, then this, the detail on this was great. This was also on the CR10. The last big print is this great big Make Anything vase. This is 100% scale of his vase printed on the CR10. And it came out, I think, really good. I do have a seam that follows down this slash or this curl right here that goes all the way down the base. Uh, that is where my Z seam is. I don't know why it even has a Z seam because this was printed in vase mode. So that, I don't know, it kind of confuses me. I don't know why that's there. It definitely was vase mode when it printed because there's no under extrusion or anything in there. There's no whip it sometimes you'll get. So yeah, I don't understand what's up with the Z seam, but awesome, awesome print. This, is, this one is waterproof. Uh, so is this one, and so is this one. Well, not anymore because I cracked it. So all of the prints that came off in the vase mode are waterproof, which is really what you want to make sure that you have a nice, strong uh, layer adhesion so you can make things waterproof. And uh, nice four bottom layers on this again. It just, it came out really nice. So the film has stuck really well to the Anycubic uh, build plate and to the Anycubic Ultra Base on the, the respectively on the Anycubic Costal and the CR10. I slow down my first layer when printing on the Anycubic Ultra Base just to make sure that first layer gets on nice and hot at six degrees centigrade on the bed. That ensures that that first layer goes down, it's nice and hot, slow it down. I think I'm running at 30% of my actual print speed to do just the first layer, nice and slow. Again, you once you ensure you have a good first layer, you're off to the races. Your print will be awesome and successful. You know, this is a nine hour print. This one was like a seven hour print. So they were pretty long prints that I did overnight. And I knew that once I had that first layer down, walk away, it's good to go. So I'm going to thank Kodak for sending this to me. And I will say my disclaimer here, no money was exchanged. I was not paid for this review. And I'm not being compensated in any other way other than to providing this roll of filament to print with. And I do have to say that it is practically gone. You can barely even see it on there. I have maybe, you know, 30 meters left, 40 meters tops left on here. So not much at all but I'm gonna put it to use for some projects that I need something a little bit stronger. And I did print off the newest MakerBox spool design that someone had created a while ago. I gave him some critiquing. This is his newest model. So for the next month's MakerBox, I'm gonna use this during that review. 
All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful. I hope you now know whether or not you should pick up some of this Kodak filament. I think it is great stuff. It prints really, really well. Uh, is it on protopasta level? I haven't been able to print anything big with protopasta filament, always just small things. So I can't really say because this is protopasta territory for cost. Now the PLA Plus is $40 per 750 gram spool. So you're not getting a full kilogram and it's 40 bucks a spool. Again, Kodak is not really looking at this towards the consumer market, more like the prosumer small business market. But if you do want to check it out, I'll put a link down below to their website that you can go ahead and check that out. And that wraps it up, guys. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, you know what to give it a big thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. Talk in the comments down below. Either way, I would love to hear from you and get your insight on how I do these filament reviews. People said they didn't watch the time lapses very much, so I am no longer doing time lapses in these filament review videos. If you guys want to know what's going on on my channel, make sure you become a subscriber. There's a button down below. And if you want to get an email notification anytime I upload new content, hit that bell icon, and that way you'll be one of the first ones to know when that video gets published. If you guys want to support me financially, you can do that via a couple ways. The first one is going to be via Patreon down below. You can donate me a dollar more monthly. I greatly appreciate current Patreons. You're awesome. If you want to donate to me like a one-time deal or Streamlabs and buy me a coffee down there, or if you just want to use any of my affiliate links down below to do your daily shopping, I appreciate that. Update your bookmarks, and I'll put links again to all the models and to the filament down below so you guys can check all that out. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, happy printing.